So the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, the Dawn of the North as it translates to, is really a special phenomenon. It is otherworldly in every sense of the word. It's Mother Nature's firework show. It is just something that will leave you awestruck and scratching your head at your place in the universe, and then also make you feel very full and very big at the same time. So Solar Cycle 25 is very exciting for all of us. Well, not if you're the sun, because you are literally exploding from the inside and shooting through the universe and the galaxy. Um, so yeah, the sun is exploding at a little bit higher rate. That's the, the root of Solar Cycle 25. But every 11 years, you have a cycle of solar activity, which means about every five and a half years, you have a peak of solar activity, and then five and a half years, a trough of solar activity. We are entering one of these peak time periods. We know we're on this ascension and we know Northern Lights are so good. Why is that? Well, the sun is essentially a large ball of hydrogen gas. Um, because it's so hot, it is actually splitting the hydrogen atoms into a proton and an electron. You have these solar explosions hurling these electrons and protons at Earth at literally a million miles an hour. And those electrons and protons are actually entering the Earth's magnetosphere, being drawn down through magnetic field lines known as the Van Allen radiation belt and creating the aurora. These particles are bombarding the elements of the atmosphere, which are nitrogen, oxygen, two most common. So bombarding those particles, they are quite literally exploding themselves, releasing energy in the form of light. So when these particles release light, that's when we see aurora. They are exquisite to see with the different colors and just knowing the, the science behind it and this exploding oxygen and nitrogen molecules. When you think about that green color that's emitted, that is the oxygen. When you think about that small pink fringe in the bottom, that is the nitrogen. And then sometimes we even get that red above the green. This is the super high altitude oxygen at like 300 miles above the Earth's surface. That's what makes those brilliant colors. So we're ascending to the top of solar cycle 25. Be totally honest, I don't think we as a species completely understand why the sun goes through these cycles. We do know we see some great northern light shows when we enter these periods of peak solar activity. So one of the key things when you think about peak times of solar activity, it's not just walking out your door in Wisconsin and seeing them in the sky. You still need to get to some of the better places or best places on Earth to see northern lights. When you look at the map, there are these two regions called aurora ovals. So you have one in the North Pole and one in the South Pole. But interestingly, it does not circle the actual North Pole, the actual South Pole. It circles geomagnetic North Pole, which is slightly askew. And that's why when we look at places around the world that are the best for aurora viewing, we're trying to find places that are along this aurora oval. It's a very, very specific area. When you do look for prime viewing areas, you of course want to be underneath that aurora oval. You also want to be in a pretty reliable area for dark skies. So going during the winter time is actually a really great time of year, not just for the darkness of the skies, but also for the cold. Yes, the cold. Uh, the cold is your friend when it comes to Northern Lights because you're not likely to get clouds. And an Arctic winter is a great time for that because it's kind of too cold for clouds to form. And you wanna be somewhat inland. You wanna be either near a frozen ocean or a frozen sea or in the middle of a landmass. Cold, interior of the continent, around a lot of other cold features, great for minimizing that cloud cover. So you add up all those ingredients, you get places like Churchill, Canada, where you're under that aurora oval, where you're in dark skies, where you're in a cold winter habitat, where you're not getting a lot of clouds forming, but also you're getting a great solar cycle right now. So with the advent of Solar Cycle 25, we're very, very excited about seeing Northern Lights. It's gonna be some of the best shows possible in the next couple of years. I fully expect it to continue on a wonderful trajectory. And going to a place like Churchill, Canada, where you're underneath the Aurora Oval, when you're away from open, warm oceans, when you're in dark night skies and you're in cold conditions, it's giving you the best chance and the best place at the best time to see extraordinary Northern Lights.